I know one of the guys you got to see last year is a Cub that's raised some eyebrows in Matt Mervis. He may be starting again in Iowa this year, depending on how the roster shakes out. That is, of course, after he leads Team Israel to to romp and stomp to the World Baseball Classic Championship, as we all know is is going to happen. That's right. But what what can you say about him as a prospect, an undrafted slugger who has torn up absolutely every level to this point? Yeah, I think with Matt, um, it was an interesting case because obviously he signed in 2020 uh, when it was a five-round draft, and more than likely he would have been a top-10 round pick anywhere falling between round seven and round 10. And he's a guy that hasn't necessarily focused on hitting uh, for his career. He was a two-way guy at Duke. If you talk to all the scouts that, that had him in college, there were all but two that scouted him as a hitter. Uh, the majority of them either scouted him as a two-way player or a pitcher. So, so he's a guy, if you look at his college stats, if you look at his Cape stats, he didn't get many at-bats in college. So you sign in 2020, you don't have a full season. You, you go to 2021, it's your first real adjustment to professional baseball in an unorthodox offseason. And, and it was a lot of trial and error for him. Then you go in 2022 and you tear up any level. So you see Mervis, he's 6'4", 235 pounds. And they were talking a lot about it on the marquee broadcast. For a guy of his size, that swing is so calm. There's not a lot of movement, not a lot of fluctuation. So for a guy to be so compact with that size and that strength, um, I, I, I think he's really got a shot. I mean, if you saw him the last month of the season, you got to a point where every time you saw a ball in the strike zone being thrown to him, you expect it to be hit 415 feet. So it, it, it's a really cool you know, thing to watch. And, and Matt being a Duke guy, very smart, very cerebral, coming at it with a chip on his shoulder. I mean, I think, I think he's a big leaguer. I think he's a guy who can hit 20 to 25 home runs a year up in the big leagues. And I think he's somebody who's getting better, not only each and every year, each and every month, but really each and every game and each and every at bat. I mean, he's just smart and makes all those adjustments. He's a really impressive player. I know that there was a lot of heat when it came to Brennan Davis. And and there's been some heat loss, obviously, because of, of some of the, the injury stuff. You got a chance to see him up close. How good is he? So I got to see him in his first AAA game. It was you know early August of 2021. And he hit a home run in his first at bat in Omaha. Then he hit a home run in his second at bat in Omaha. Then he hit a home run in his next game in Omaha. So you are a year and a half removed from a guy who was named the Futures League MVP and homeward in his first two AAA at bats. I'm not. I'm not out on him. So I, I think that Brennan is a guy who um, he, he's a very confident player when things are going right, and he's somebody who, when things are going right, he could be a middle of the order player, and he's somebody in the outfield that he'll surprise you. I mean, there was a stretch last year where he had three outfield assists in five games. So he's got a good arm, and, and you've seen the bat play when healthy at a variety of different levels. So. Yeah, I, I think Brandon Davis is a big leaguer. He needs to stay healthy. He needs to get the ABs. He needs to feel comfortable. But uh, I think Brandon is in the right mindset right now. And seeing him in spring training, getting action, um, especially after last year where you know he has the back injury, he misses three months. Everybody expects him to miss the rest of the season. He comes back. He had a home run in his last game with the I Cubs. Goes to the fall league. He plays pretty well. Uh, then he gets some rest, and he's healthy during spring training. I think this is a good sign for him. I haven't seen a lot of Caleb Killian. I know his introduction to the big leagues was bumpy, to say the least. But when you're looking at a pitching staff that is prioritizing the missing of bats, there's clearly movement and there's clearly velocity that some other guys are lacking at this point. It's easy velocity, too. I mean, you look at the frame. He's a long, wiry, righty, 6'4". The ball just jumps out of his arm. And, yeah, I know there were reports last week that, that Caleb was a little banged up at the end of the season. And, and you could tell he was stiff. But even with the stiffness in the lower half, I mean, you had a start up in St. Paul last year where they have a, a little bit of a juiced radar gun at CHS Field. But he had 105 times, which was really 98 to 99. So to be able to have that velo while not being 100%, everything is just live. I mean, the curveball snaps. Fastball jumps out of his hand. The cutter bites. I mean, he just has pure stuff that you don't see. So if he can be healthy and things can click and the mechanics stay steady, uh, he's somebody who has top line of the rotation stuff. Now, there's a lot of guys off top end of the rotation stuff, 
and don't materialize for a number of different reasons. But the foundation is there for Killian. And, you know, I said last year he reminds me a lot of Jack Flaherty, just body type mm. release. And I, I think that, you know, obviously that, that's a lofty expectation for him, but, but the similarities are there for somebody who's seen him like me. As someone who's inside this organization, you get to see a ton of players and you know what the, the, what the major league club added. What's got you excited going into the season? I, I think just being there last weekend, it was just a vibe. I mean, uh, obviously it's been four or five years since they've been really competitive and the locker room has completely changed. But there's a common denominator between – Dancy Swanson, Eric Hosmer, uh, Trey Mancini, and the guys that they've signed. Not only have they played well, they won. And not only have they won, they won World Series. And to bring a World Series culture you know, from guys who've won in a bunch of different organizations and have different perspectives, that to me is a big deal. And once you can influence young guys like a Caleb Killian, like a Matt Murray, like a Brendan Davis, like a Pete Crow Armstrong, who I think is going to be a stud. Uh, I, I think being able to mix the winning culture with those young players, I mean, it has all the makings of being a, a really nice Cubs team.